quick revision video on relative mass and if you're not already subscribed please hit the button. So the first thing we'll do is look at some essentials and then we'll move into the different types of calculations that you can be asked on this topic. So some essentials then, so the masses of all isotopes are compared to a standard isotope and the standard isotope is the carbon-12 isotope. The mass of the carbon-12 isotope is defined exactly as 12 atomic mass units or 12U so therefore a twelfth of that is going to be one atomic mass unit. You'll see why that's important when we come on to the definition which is now relative isotopic mass is the mass of an isotope relative or compared to one twelfth of the mass of an atom of carbon 12. So moving on to relative atomic mass now so almost all elements exist as a mixture of isotopes. So in the case of chlorine, we've got chlorine 35 and chlorine 37 isotopes. And you can see there are far more 35s than 37s. So the relative atomic mass needs to take into account the contribution all of the isotopes are having on the, on the overall mass, the average mass. So the relative atomic mass is the average or weighted mean mass of an atom and then that ending is the same compared to 1 12th of the mass of an atom of carbon 12. So the mass number you see on the periodic table is the relative atomic mass that takes into account the different isotopes whereas the relative isotopic mass is only considering one isotope. So the relative isotopic mass of that one there is 35 whereas that one's 37. But a sample of chlorine, which has a mixture of the isotopes in, well, that needs to take into account the proportions of each isotope. So what do we see on the periodic table? We see 35.5. So quickly, how do they determine relative atomic mass? So they do it by something called mass spectrometry. So I'll quickly run through the steps on this. So the sample needs to be vaporized, and then it's ionized to form one plus ions. Once it's got the charge on, it can be accelerated through the spectrometer. The heavier ions move more slowly. They actually have to travel around a curve and that's how they get deflected. And it's more difficult to deflect the heavier ones than the lighter ones onto the detector. And that's how the ions are separated. As the ions reach the detector, you get a signal. The greater the abundance, so the more of a particular isotope, the larger its signal is going to be. And then the spectrometer measures the mass to charge ratio, or m over z for short, of each ion. And because your charge is 1 plus, that's going to be equivalent to the relative isotopic mass. So the different types of calculations now. So we'll start with how do you calculate relative atomic mass from percentage abundances. So as a typical spectrum now, mass spectrum on the screen, that's for chlorine. So we've got the percentage abundance of the two isotopes. So 35 is 75.8% abundant and 37 is 24.2. So the equation or formula we use is mass of the isotope times abundance plus mass times abundance. Obviously if there's a third line on your spectrum you just keep extending this formula here and we're going to divide by the total abundance. So the numbers plug in like that, and the total abundance, obviously, because it's a percentage, is 100, and that's coming out at that 35.5. Now, sometimes you might be given relative abundances rather than percentage abundances, but nothing to worry about. It's exactly the same formula. We just do something slightly different because the total abundance may or may not add up to 100 now. So if you want to pause the video, have a go at that one, and then play on when you're ready. So the numbers plug in like that, and the relative atomic mass comes out at 39.1. Another type of calculation is calculate the mass of the other isotope. So this time we've been given the relative atomic mass, and we're told it's got 60% of antimony 121 and one other isotope determine the mass number of the isotope in the sample. So again, if you want to pause and have a go, the formula, by the way, is exactly the same. We're just using it slightly differently. 
So the numbers go in this time like that. So we've got the relative atomic mass already. We know it's 60% of 121. One. The other isotope's got to be 40%, but we don't know its mass. So I'm using a question mark there. So that rearranges to that. Question mark comes out at 1, 2, 3. So the final type of calculation is where you get asked to calculate the percentage abundance of an isotope. In this calculation, I'm getting us to do both of the isotopes. So we're told the relative atomic mass, 85.47, two isotopes, 85 and 87, calculate their relative abundances. So I call this a tug of war calculation. You'll see why when I go through it. So we'll put a number line in, 85 and 87 for your two isotopic masses. The relative atomic mass, so the weighted mean is coming out at 85.47. So here's the tug of war bit. So the 85 isotope is pulling away from 87 by 1.53. So if you start there, to get to the average, it's 1.53. That means the 87 is pulling in the opposite direction by 0.47. The difference is 2, and the formula I use for this is the percentage abundance is the pull of the isotope divided by the difference multiplied by 100. So the percentage for the 85 isotope is its pull 1.53 divided by the difference of 2 multiplied by 100, 76.5% and the other one's obviously 23.5% but there's the calculation for it.